Well, I'm joined now in the studio by UKIP spokeswoman on Home Affairs, the MEP Diane James. Welcome to the programme. Is it your belief that if we weren't in the EU, we wouldn't be seeing these scenes in Calais? Yes, I believe it is. Why? What, what, what well, do you base the, that on? The, the draw for these migrants is a future, an economic future in the United Kingdom. They've gone all the way across Europe. They've obviously got in first off, um, either via uh, Lesbos, uh, the Mediterranean route. They've maybe come on the Balkan route. They've then either been trafficked or made their own way all the way to Calais mm. and also Dunkirk. And they're there because they see an economic future in the United Kingdom. But what difference would it make if we weren't in the EU in terms of migrants trying to get over to the UK? And you're, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not following your point. That's the, I'm trying well, to answer the question. Well, I mean, if we were out of the EU, migrants would still want to come to Britain. That wouldn't absolutely, change. Absolutely. So well, why would it the, make it more difficult for them if we were outside the EU? What, what I would hope would have happened by now is that those individuals, instead of risking their lives, mm. would actually apply through the lawful legal means to come to the United Kingdom and if if we're out of the European Union and they then clearly they wouldn't be able to get as far as they could in terms of the channel uh, channel ports right do you agree with that assessment I, mean, I think that whether if we leave Europe it won't make the slightest different these people have trekked all the way across other European countries because they want to come to Britain mm -hmm. because Britain's seen as um, you know, the best of the European countries to actually bring your kids up in and it's the most open uh, the least intolerant about Muslims and uh, what well, we've got to accept the fact is we're largely responsible for this I mean we had our government along with the Americans saying they want to overthrow Assad they wanted to overthrow Gaddafi I mean, they wanted they did get rid of Saddam Hussein it's been catastrophic I mean frankly it's worse off now if you're a Libyan or an Iraqi or a Syrian than it was before. Well, Our interventions have been a disaster so you and we don't recognise it. Right, this. I mean that's the foreign policy yeah. argument as you, as you see it obviously mm. for, for the cause of the wave of migration and you're convinced that it wouldn't change if Britain on June the 24th pulls out of the EU these scenes it, will carry on unabated and people will it still might try and even help. get worse because there'll be a lot of people in European government saying, why should we be doing anything for Britain? They've just, um, just turned their back on us. Well, Ken, you know, I, I'm obviously going to disagree with you. They, they've got to Calais on the mm. basis that they've managed to breach, mm. if you like, the European mm. um, frontiers. The Schengen system allows them mm. then to get as far as they mm. do. If we're, it, I mean, that's possibly the only area that we might agree whether the EU is, the UK is a member of the EU or not. Mm. Let's just take that out of the mm. equation. The issue is they get into Europe, they then can get as far as they mm. do on the basis that there is no border control. There's mm. nothing stopping them. There's no passport control. There's no means to actually force them. But they'll still be able to do that even if mm. we have left. We're, we're not disagreeing. We're mm. not disagreeing. Right, and that was the point I was mm. trying to make. So it, materially, it won't really change the situation. Will it? We're not part of Schengen mm. um, anyway. Um, and as you say, many of these migrants are, are wanting to just get to Britain um, to live and to work. They're not interested in the rest of Europe. And that really wouldn't change. No, but there's this cohort, obviously, that are so focused on getting to the United Kingdom that they're prepared to put themselves at that degree of risk. Now, what we do know is that thousands of individuals are arriving either on the Macedonian border or on the yeah. Greek islands, but and we've got no idea what proportion of those are still then prepared to make that next level of risk and get all the way to Calais and Dunkirk, for instance. But it hasn't really affected the UK, has it? I mean, these are desperate well, scenes on, 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 on mainland Europe, but actually in terms of the numbers of people that have actually made it uh, to Britain as a result of this migrant uh, crisis and who've actually been accepted uh, either as asylum seekers uh, or refugees, hasn't really changed since this well, uh, has erupted. Well, I think, you know, first of all, your question ought to be directed at, for instance, Kent County Council that's having to, to actually look after children and actually home some of these people and make those resources available. You also to, ought to talk to Kent Police who actually have to manage these individuals when they jump out at the two service stations from lorries that they've hidden in. You also, I think, have to look, talk to somebody like the head of Eurostar, right. Eurotunnel, who have seen a big impact on their business on the basis that well, trains are being stopped you because say that, but migrants the figures, are breaching. The figures don't back it up. I mean, these are UK government figures there were 25,771 asylum applications from main applicants in the year ending June 2015 only 2,000 of those applications were from Syria the number of applications remains low relative to the peak number of applications in 2002 and Joe, your, your, your issue there is with asylum seekers we're not talking about asylum seekers we're talking about individuals who a number of European heads of states have said these are economic migrants we've had 
interviews, we've seen press coverage, we've, we've heard individuals talking about the reason they want to get to the United Kingdom, nothing to do with asylum. They, they're going because they believe, A, they can get a job, better standard of living, or they're entitled to benefits. Right. And that seems would to be you, the three issues for them. Would you agree, though, that if we weren't part of the EU, we'd have less influence on discussions to do with the migrant no, crisis? No, not at all. It doesn't make a one... Uh, we, we have an opt-out of uh, the Schengen Agreement. We are signed mm. up to the UN conven uh, Convention on uh, uh, Asylum uh, Processing and Management. So in terms of our role in or out of um, the European Union, I would rather go with those two uh, uh, issues and areas rather than try and follow is something that the EU is trying to manufacture. So is this actually going to be the main thrust of your argument in this EU referendum? Will it be part of your campaign? The migration and, and lack of border control, yes, of course, that's a key as aspect of the Brexit campaign. And that's an important point here in that it is the lack of border control. Will it be the migrant you, crisis? No, it got, won't be the migrant no. crisis. It's the lack of border right. control and the uncontrolled migration to the United Kingdom. I mean, Germany has been criticised and also praised um, for the decision and the announcement by Angela Merkel mm. to say Syrian refugees are welcome here. Do you think, as this migrant crisis unfolds and the pressure being put on countries like Greece and Italy and Macedonia, that that was the wrong thing to say? No, I mean, literally, Greece and, and Macedonia cannot cope with this wave. There's got to be a a European-wide response. Each country has to take a, a, a fair share of genuine asylum seekers. Mm. I mean, the problem that, I mean, that worries UKIP most is that anybody in the, the, the other 27 European countries is free to come here. They're not asylum seekers. Asylum seekers are a minute part mm. of the migration that's coming to Britain. Okay. Most of it is legally from the rest of Europe. In Macedonia's case, do you think it's right that they've taken what's been seen as a hard line at their border? They described groups of people, men, 400 or so men, trying to break through before they had been registered. Is that the right way to go? I think it is. It, it, Macedonia happens to be one of seven Schengen members that has temporarily, we'll put that in quotes, uh, reintroduced border control. You only have to look at the former head, Ronald uh, Noble, and what he said, that the Schengen Agreement was effectively a passport to allow extremism mm. and terrorism to be passport free right across Europe. But you they know, are... When you have a head of an organisation such as that, uh, you know, an organisation with a huge amount of authority making that statement, I think, you know, what Macedonia has done is absolutely spot on. Even you... using tear gas to control the crowds, tear gas that's been fired at small children. Well, I haven't, I don't know the exact details about what they've used. That... I'll go on the basis of what you've said. If they've used tear, tear gas, maybe they felt that was the only option. I don't agree. So you do think I don't it's just like you don't? Agree. Right. So you don't think tear gas should be used. I mean, the complaint is that uh, these large groups of migrants have been penned in for so long that this frustration is now overflowing and erupting. Hence, they are trying to push down the fence. What do you say to that? Well, the good thing, as far as I can tell, is that this awful activist anarchist organisation from the United Kingdom called No Borders currently creating a lot of the, of the trouble in the Calais camp hasn't made it to Macedonia and some of the others because quite frankly the mayhem that they've managed to cause over the last few months in Calais as an example if they were to replicate that in Macedonia or Lesbos well goodness knows and it's a very very shameful reflection on the United Kingdom. Would you open the doors? Would you like to see the government welcoming large numbers of migrants in the way that Angela Merkel has done in Germany? I mean, I I, I think there's a real problem that you know, you, the pressure that we've got on jobs and on homes, unless the government is prepared to actually create more jobs and more homes, there'll be huge tensions. I mean, right. people so out you there don't think, think it's a good idea. These migrants, whether they're asylum seekers or from other parts of Europe, they've taken our jobs and homes. The truth is, Labour and Tory governments haven't created enough jobs and sure, homes. Sure, but now, where we are, hmm. would you say, let's take in... 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 uh, Syrian migrants or Iraqis or whatever. Well, look, I, I come from Brent. When we had the crisis in 72, when the Ugandan Asians were kicked out of their country, Edward Heath's Tory government turned to councils like Brent and said, could you take 10,000 in one borough? They gave financial support, they helped us build homes, it worked. What you can't do is just simply say, you know, open the borders and let people come. You, if people are coming, you've got to plan. You've got to build the homes. You've got to make sure there are more jobs being created. And that's Fine, precisely then. the problem. You know, mm. we have got a system, as has been shown with last week's uh, statistics, 
we can't control our borders, so we actually can't control the numbers coming, and we can't plan accordingly. You know, no government, no responsible government, should be constantly looking backwards and saying, hold on, our government policy is now going to be one of catch-up, which is currently what the situation is. Diane James, thank you.